This is my boss locked Iron Man. Starting as a level three, I've been leveling up my account through fighting bosses and using their loot. I'm an Iron Man, so this means no trading with other players or using the Grand Exchange, but I have taken it a step further and can't buy items or pick them up. My goal is to obtain my best in slot gear that I'll have access to, with the final challenge being the Inferno, the hardest content in RuneScape. Previously, in last episode, I managed to get 40 Slayer and complete the Tarn's Lair mini quest, letting me imbue my salve amulets. With the imbued amulets, I went and killed Calvarion till I got 70 prayer, unlocking Piety, the best melee prayer in the game. With the prayer upgrade, I went back to Tombs of a Mascot to complete my first normal mode KC. After finishing the first KC and not getting rewarded, I did 10 normal mode KC. Then, that brings us to now. Between last episode and this episode, there's been a big update for my account. Possibly one of the biggest. That update is the combat achievements. With the combat achievements getting changed to a point-based system compared to the past of having to complete a whole tier, it now makes it possible for me to finish some. And the goal for this episode will be completing the hard combat achievements. Okay, so this is the first time I'm logging in after the combat achievement update. So, let me see how many I have completed. Let's go and check. So, I have completed 73 tasks. So, I might honestly have the hard completed. Let me quickly have a look and see how many points I've got. I have completed up to the medium. That is actually really good. I surprisingly haven't done any master or grandmaster, but I can actually get them done pretty quickly. But the goal that I want to get to is completing the hard tier. The hard tier gives me the best rewards for what I need on this account, and any rewards after that aren't really that noticeable or good compared to what medium and hard give me. So let me first go claim my easy and medium, and then we can get on to hard. All right, there we go. That's our easy one we have got. That one doesn't really give us anything at all, but the medium one is a really, really important one. So what the medium one does for this account is, this means I get no more prayer drain from the Barrow's prayer drain effect when I'm in the crypt. So this is huge. Currently, if I ever do Barrow's, I basically have to do one KC at Barrow's down here, and then, or down here, and then I teleport out to go to Ferox with the Ferox teleport, and then I minigame teleport to Shades of Morton right around here, and then I walk back in. But the minigame teleport has a 20 minute cooldown, so I can only do that every 20 minutes. So once I finish this run and the teleport's on cooldown, I have to walk from the center of Varrock. And I have done 704 barrows with about every second KC walking back from Varrock. So now with this equipped, I won't have any prayer drain effect and I'll just be able to sit there in Barrows and do multiple trips until my minigame teleport is off cooldown, and then I can teleport to Ferox, restore my stats, and then minigame teleport straight to Barrows. So this is going to possibly double the amount of Barrows KC I can get an hour. So that is huge. Hard, on the other hand, gives me unlimited teleports to just in front of the God Wars dungeon. Right here. I was waiting for this update to come out until I truly grinded God Wars Dungeon. So I'm putting my Tombs of a Mascot grind on hold, and I'm going to get the hard diary completed, and then we are going to grind out Barrows for the Aram's Legs, Carol's Skirt, and then I am grinding General Grador for my Bandos Armor Set, and then after that I can finally head back to Tombs of a Mascot fully kitted out. So combat achievements are on the menu. I'm going to go quickly have a look through what ones I have completed and what I can complete for the easiest amount of points to get 183. So we'll see what content I will be doing, but it's probably going to be a lot of different bosses. Actually, just before I get started on looking through those, I'm going to quickly use up my lamps and the best skill for me to put these on right now is Herblor. The higher Herblor I get, the better, because once my Herblor becomes high enough, then I can finally enter Chambers of Zarek. So after looking through the combat achievements, I have planned a route for the needed 121 points. But first, let's hear from this episode's sponsor. Let me ask you a question. Do you need a good body trimmer for yourself that can easily help you take care of your hairy problems? 
Well, if yes, then Manscaped has got the razor for you. The Lawnmower 4.0 is a waterproof cordless body trimmer that will really help you take care of certain areas. You don't even have to worry because their skin safe technology will help you avoid nicks and cuts for a truly safe shave. Trust me, I've used it for over half a year now. You can get one of these shavers with the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped that includes some other goodies like the Crop Preserver Deodorant, Ball Toner, Boxes, and the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Trimmer. You can get all this and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code BOSSLOCKED at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code BOSSLOCKED at manscaped.com. So thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring this episode. The first boss is going to be Barrows. I only need one task here, which is the can't touch me task, which means I can't get any hits from Darok, Verak, Torag, and Guthans. Well, that's another fail on this task. I got hit when I was trying to run around the sarcophagus. So here we are again. We'll try our next run. And with that kill, that should be the combat task completed when we go loot the chest. I know you don't get it straight away after killing all four of the brothers without taking damage, but I did not get hit at all just then. So that should be the combat task. Now we'll just kill Aram and kill Carol. And when we loot, we should be good. All right. And with this chest right here, this should be combat task completed. It is. Can't touch me. We got it. Two points down. And that's Barry's tasks actually completed now. Now we can move on to the next task. And that is going to be at the mole. Next, we are going back to the giant mole to complete one task again, which is to kill the mole with four instances of damage. That means I can hit zeros and they don't count. It will only count when I deal damage. So I will have to hit over 50 four hits in a single kill. So if the RNG is bad, this could take a while. Oh, wow. Okay. We did it. <laughs> that was nice. Okay, I didn't expect that to go so well in... What was that? Three kills, I think. Easy task done. Now we move on to the next one, which is uh, not going to be quick. Now, this boss is going to require a bit more time investment, and there is four tasks I can complete. That boss is the Calphite Queen. The tasks I can do here are Chitin Penetrator, which I have to lower KQ's defenses and kill her. Prayer Smasher, which I have to kill KQ with Varric's Flail and only a Flail. And the last two tasks are 25 kills and 50 kills. All these tasks add up to 13 points. So there is a lot to get here. Is that it? There we go. That should be the Varak kill completed. And it was. Prayer Smasher done. Then we get a super anti-poison. Nice. So now that we're in the second phase, we can just try and use our vulnerability on it. It's got a 15% defense lowering on it because I am wearing the Tome of Water. So let's try and hit this after I take my armor off, of course. And if we hit this, we should be all good for another combat task. And we've hit it straight away. Okay. Now we'll swap back to this and I'll just kill it. There we go. That should be another combat task completed. That is good. Now we can go reset and then get 25 kills. That was definitely by far the quickest Cal Fight Queen kill. Seven minutes. All right. So full Verax looks like it's the way to go. I'm also still casting my vulnerability at halfway through the kill when it goes to its next phase. Um, but besides that, I'm also specking it in the first phase, but it looks like this is the way to go about it now. There we go. That one is the 25th kill, which will get us the combat achievement as well. So I was planning to originally go to 50 kills, but I am very, very over this. That was by far the quickest kill I had on average. I was killing them at about 10 minutes per kill. So that was by far the fastest. Um, I was originally planning to go to 50 KC, but I have looked into it some more and there is a few other combat achievements that are much easier to accomplish than the next, um, how many hours would that take me? I was getting four kills an hour. So the next six hours or seven hours that the next 25 kills was going to take me. I'm going to stop doing that for now and go to the next boss to get our next combat achievements. During all these boss tasks, I am going to be working on some Hespori tasks at the same time. Hespori can offer me 10 points in total from killing Hespori five times, killing all the flowers within five seconds, and killing Hespori without losing any prayer points. With Hespori as a side thing, the next boss is going to be Seracnus. I only need to do one task here, and I haven't got it before because you need to focus on the boss and not kill the minions. 
So this one is going to be real easy. So let's get it done quickly. And that should be Serachna's task done of not getting ranged twice in a row. Only took two kills because it's pretty hard to get that task done straight away when you enter for the first kill because most likely when you enter it will range you and web you and then it will move straight away which is straight away another range attack. So got it first try basically. It's time to head off to the wilderness. Scorpia is going to be the next boss and I only have to get 25kc here and I'm currently at 12. Since we're already near here, the next boss is going to be the Chaos Fanatic. All I have to do is kill the Chaos Fanatic 10 times without drinking any prayer restore or leaving the wilderness. This is easily done by just praying on an altar, which I will be using the altar next to the Ferox Enclave, just so I have less chance of dying than using the Chaos Altar. Just before the next boss, I need an upgrade. And to get that, I have to do Scorpion Catcher. That is quest finished. Now I get this guy to upgrade my battle staff to a Mystic Battle Staff for some extra magic bonus. I thought I could make an air staff, but apparently I need 66 crafting to make it, and I only have 64. So I just have to get two more levels using the gems and gold in my bank. That's 66 crafting. Let's go and make the battle staff. Now it's time to get this upgraded to a mystic staff. I am allowed to do this since it is a service which are allowed since I am upgrading or basically converting an item that I've gotten from a boss. There's the Mystic Air Staff. Now I have plus four magic bonus over the regular Air Staff. Now it's time to head to the next boss. And that is Zolra. I have two tasks to complete here. One task is 150 KC, which is going to be 30 more kills since I currently have 120. The other is to kill three Snakelings at once, which could hopefully happen by getting to recoil kill them at the same time in these 30 kills. But if that doesn't happen, I'll have to deal with this problem after the 30 kills. Okay, and with that kill, that's the 150th kill and the combat task done. So we got the Zora Master one. Now I just need to get the last task I can do here, which is the Snake 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 task. So I'm going to have to quickly bank and come back with a Dragon Two Hand. All right, do this. There we go. That's the combat task completed. Perfect. Well, that's another Hespori task done for plant-based diet. That's the only other one I needed to get done here besides the 5kc. So just two more kc and I have this Hespori seed and I need to get myself one more Hespori seed to finish it off. So... I'm going to keep doing myself some farm runs and hopefully get the seed needed in one of these. It's finally time for the first new boss for the combat achievements grind. And that is the Theater of Blood. Entry mode, that is. Here, there are potentially eight tasks I can complete. Six of them I can do solo, but two of the tasks I will need to call on my slave. The tasks I'll be doing solo first are on screen. Honestly, the two bloat tasks are free points along with the Zarpus and Verzik tasks. Anticoagulants might be a really hard one for me to complete since the blood spawns can make it difficult sometimes, but that's the only hard one. And of course, we're going to be completing this solo before I bring in my slave, so the KC task is also fine. A lot easier than what I thought that was going to be, so that's that's good. That was what was that one? That one was one of the ones I didn't think I'd get actually for the combat task. That's our first task done here, which is the defeat her without letting any blood spawns live. Okay, that was really easy. All right, so for the first combat task, incredibly simple and a completely free one is just to enter from this side of the barrier and then I get some points pretty quick. Let's begin. I have my salve amulet on as well, which is going to be another thing to kill him with the salve amulet. So, all right, that's another one done, killing him with the salve amulet. So that's nice. That's the Zarpus one and the don't look at me combat achievement. Cool. Now we're up to Verzik. This is going to be fun. Now we're at the final challenge. So Verzik. Not going to be the easiest. I also have to change my Fang to Slash here because it's better than having it on Stab. And now it's time to do this fight. So at the start, I'll just have to Mage with the Dawnbringer here. There's a few tasks to do here, but I don't think I'm really going to get some of them. I have to do some with a duo. So with a teammate, there's one task for that. There's one where I have to not get knocked back by her which I'm not very good at TOB, so that's not going to happen. And the other one is just to finish off a entry mode TOB. So I'm at least going to get one combat task in finishing it off, and I don't think I'm going to get the other one. All right, now it's time for this. Oh, that's no pillar. Okay, I forgot about that.
Oh my god, there we go, finally. That was, uh... <laughs> That was a lot rougher than what I thought it would be, but at least we got it on the first attempt, so... Nice, that's the entry mode done. That's cool. It sucks that we can't get any purples from entry mode, but at least we actually completed it with my um very limited knowledge of Theater of Blood, so that was nice. First attempt, and we did it. I definitely bought in a lot more supplies than what I needed to, but... Oh well, we got it done with no food left and barely any HP, so... Let's loot this and hopefully get something nice. Even though there's not much too nice I can really get from here. Yeah, it's about what you expect. A magic seed is actually pretty good from an entry mode TOB. So I'll take that. And the rest is not bad at all. So that's at least that done. And now the only things I need to do from here is um finding a teammate and getting the ones done at Sodaseg and also at Verzik, the last two. There we go. That's the other one of just be safe. Oh, yeah, I need to share it to you. All right. Perfect. Well, that's the pass it on one done. That's all the combat achievements done with that raid being finished, so the Molten Glass isn't actually too bad for me. We get to go on to the next boss. Since we're in the area, it's time for another new boss, the Nightmare. Now, the Nightmare has to be fought as a team before you can fight the solo version, so I am going to bring along some people for that. I can only complete two of the 14 tasks here. They are to kill the Nightmare once and to kill two of the husks that she spawns at once. The husks are going to be killed just like the snakelings for Zora with the dragon two hand. So I'll just have to focus up and concentrate on getting a kill here, which might be hard because the nightmare hits really hard off prayer. And I have done a total of three kills on my Iron Man, but that was about a year ago. Oh, I misclicked on it, but the ping killed me. Fuck. <laughs> I was nearly done too. I clicked, but the ping... Oh, 300 ping wasn't great for me just then. That was right at the end too. I think we had like two more pillar attacks and it was completely fucking done. Oh, that's really rough. The redemption proc and everything wasn't enough to save me. All right, next time I should be better because I don't have rust anymore, but let me go run all the way from the center of Varrock back there. So let's go do that, I suppose. All right, come on, please. Yeah, there we go. Combat task done. Perfect, baby. Nice. There we go. That's the first Nightmare KC done. Perfect. Even had two food left over and didn't have to touch a single Manta Ray. Now I have done TOB and Nightmare. Now we are moving back to familiar waters and heading to the Dagonoth Kings. Between the three of them, I can complete eight tasks. But some of these tasks can be really hard and depend on RNG that just might not happen. Plus, with the long walk and supplies I have to use, I might go and get some points off some other bosses. I thought I'd get the combat task to kill Prime while all the Dagonoth Kings were attacking me, since my bow was nearly out of charges and I had to leave. I actually didn't like the idea of walking all the way back to the Dagonoth Kings, so now I'm at Tombs of a Masket to get some pretty easy tasks here. Plus, they are made easier since I don't have to complete the raid to finish the task. I just have to enter, get them completed, and then I can leave. The first one I'm going for is going to be Chompington, which I have to kill Zebak with only melee and not die. This task has to be done at raid level 150, like all the other tasks that I'm going to be doing here. So for this, I'm only bringing in a melee setup since I can leave after this task is done. That's the task completed, so now to move on to the next one. Next task I'm going to be doing is I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush means I can only destroy four or less boulders during the whole fight. So that means I'll either have to skip the boulder phase, or I'll just have to tank some boulders if I can't skip. There we go, that should be the task completed. I'm in a rush, where that was probably my slowest bar bar in a while, so that's pretty cool. Now that's the two tasks I could really get done here by myself, so... Now it's off to the next place. These last few tasks are all happening in the chambers of Zeric. So I'm just gonna quickly keep restarting until I get the rooms I need first. That was very quick. The second room being the shamans was what I was looking for. The combat task I have to do here is Shazian Specialist, which I have to kill a shaman and take no damage from him, which I can do very easily by safe spotting one. So that's what I'm quickly going to do. 
Now that I have the shaman safe spotted, I can just sit here and get the combat task done. There we go. There's the Shazy and Specialist completed. Obviously easy because I could safe spot one of them. So now I'm just going to kill this dude. And then the next room is actually the muter dial after the resource room, which is somewhere else I have to get a task from. So I'll finish this room and then we'll go to that room. For the mutter dial, I have one task to complete and that's to not let her heal by eating at the meat tree. This task is super easy since I just have to use my ax to chop down the tree and then just kill her. It won't even matter if I die, so I can just keep dying and running back here for a free four points. There we go, that's the Mutadile killed, and that combat task done as well. That's all that I can get from this raid, so I'll leave this one and I'll keep resetting till I can get my next one. Well, that was instant. The room I want is the second room, the Ice Demon. This one boss is going to get me three tasks done, and at the same time, get me 12 points, which I only need 10 to complete my hard combat achievements. Those tasks are Cryo No More, Blizzard Dodger, and Kill It With Fire. The first two tasks, I have to kill the Ice Demon without taking any hits, and the final task is to kill it with fire spells, so I will be killing it with Fire Surge. Now, there is a safe spot for this, so this time it's going to be easy to do as well. There we go, that's the three tasks completed and the hard combat diary done. Not diary, hard combat achievements done. With those three, that was very easy. Now I can grab all my stuff, we can leave, and we can finally go grab the hard combat achievement hilt. So let's go quickly do that. Let's talk to Gommel, say we have completed our combat achievements. There we go, we've got our hard ones done. So now I have fewer kills of the minions to get into God Wars dungeon. I can rent my own private rooms there as well. I receive 50% discount on imbues, which is really nice because I plan to imbue stuff very soon. Nightmare Zone through Nightmare Zone and Soul Wars. And I gain points from pest control, that doesn't matter. Dwarf Cannon doesn't matter. But the other thing that does matter is the Trollheim teleport right here. So I do this teleport. I am right out in front of God Wars Dungeon, and in chat there is no uses because it is unlimited with the hard combat achievements done. So, now that I can tally here, just constantly, I don't have to tally to the top of the mountain over there, which means this is only going to take up one inventory slot instead of the previous, which was taking up two, being the lore runes and the fire rune. And with how close some of my kills here are, one food slot could mean the kill or it could mean dying. So it is pretty huge to have this. Now, let's put this lamp into Herb Lore as well because that's hard to train and I get 15,000 XP for it. That is so many secondaries. Now, that's the goal of the episode achieved. It's time to kill the God Wars dungeon bosses.